Okay, here are our solutions to perfect problem two for math 112. Uh, given a bunch of logarithmic and exponential equations and asked to solve them. All right, um, let's do it. First one, log base two of, log base three of, log base four of this mess. Three times five raised up to the four x minus 10 power. From that whole thing minus 11. Um, is equal to zero. So I think what I would do is raise both to two, two, both sides of this equation. Should I show that step? Yeah, I'm, I'll start out by showing it. Two to the log base two of the rest of this stuff. is equal to two to the zero power. Um, but two to the log base two of something that cancels out. So we're left with just log base three of log base four of three times five to the four x minus 10 minus 11 is equal to two to the zero power, which is just one. Um, and then you can kind of repeat that logic, except instead of doing two to both sides of the equation, do three to both sides of the equation. Um, maybe I'll skip a step. What happens after you do that is the three to the log base three cancels out, and you're left with just log base four of three times five to the four x minus 10. Oops. Minus 11. And that's equal to four to the first power. 4, 3 to the first power, doing 3 to both sides of the equation here, um, which is just 3. And then you can repeat to 4 to both sides of the equation. You'll get 3 times 5 to the 4x minus 10 minus 11 equals 4 to the third power. Say 3 to the first power is just 1. 4 to the third power is 4 times 4 is 16 times four is 64, I think that's right. Um, yeah, because two to the sixth is 64. Anyways, um, now we gotta solve this for x. So let's see, next maybe add 11 to both sides. We get three times five raised up to the four x minus 10 power is equal to 75. We added 11 to both sides. Uh, then divide by three, five to the four x minus 10 power is equal to 25. Um, take the log base 5 of both sides. So then, sure, I'll write it. Log base 5 of 5 to the 4x minus 10 is equal to log base 5 of 25. Put this on the left is just 4x minus 10. Either using our third log rule, you bring that down in front, and this is just 1. Or by definition of the logs, this is saying, what power would you have to raise 5 to to be left with 5 to the 4x minus 10? Well, that power is 4x minus 10. Anyways, left-hand side is 4x minus 10. Right-hand side is 2 because the log base 5 of 25 is 2. So we can solve this. Add 10 to both sides. Got 4x equals 12. Divide by 4. We get x equals 3. One down. Many to go. Number two, we're given two to the two x power equals 20 to the x minus one power. Okay, uh, let's see, lots of different ways you could approach this. You take the log base two of both sides or the log base 20 of both sides, or you could be like, well, the logs don't really match, so maybe I'll just take the natural log of both sides. I think that's the way I'm going to do it, although you have lots of different options on how you do this again. But I'm going to take the natural log of both sides. So we got natural log of 2 to the 2x equals natural log of 20 to the x minus 1. And the reason I did that is because I kind of looked into the future and knew I'd want to use my third log rule. I want to get these two x's out of the exponent. Um, and now that I have log of something raised up to an exponent, I can use my third log rule bring them down in front to get 2x times the natural log of 2 is equal to x minus 1 
times the natural log of 20. So this is good. Now I have a more linear equation. I just have to solve it for x. Problem is there's an x here and an x here. So we need to, instead of having two x's, just have one x. The way we'll do that is by getting all the x's on the same side of the equation. And the way we'll do that is by distributing this natural log of 20 into the x minus 1. So we'll get x times natural log of 20 minus 1 times natural log of 20. And now that we have things broken up, we can get all the x's on the same side of the equation. Uh, maybe to avoid too many negative numbers, I'll add natural log of 20 over here. And I'll subtract 2x natural log of 2 over here. Um, and the reason I did that is now I can factor out an x from both of these terms. Natural log of 20 minus 2 natural log of 2. I get to here. And so finally I get x is equal to the natural log of 20 divided by the natural log of 20 minus 2 times the natural log of 2. Which is right. I mean, it's the right answer. However, it wants me to leave it in the form log base b of a. How the heck can I rewrite this as log base b of a? Well, we're going to have to get kind of clever. I don't know where I'm going to put the next two problems. Um, have to get kind of clever. We will first, we can put these two logs together. So we can say this is the natural log of 20 divided by, well, maybe a better way to do it. Before we put these two logs together, this two kind of gets in the way. So I guess we could use our third log rule backwards and say this is the natural log of 2 squared. Take this 2 and bring it up in the exponent. I mean, the reason you might do that is because now we can say it's the natural log of 20 minus the natural log of 4. And now on the bottom of this equation, um, we can use our third log rule set backwards. Nope, sorry, that's our second log rule backwards. The natural log of a difference is the same as the natural log of 20 divided by 4, um, which is the natural log of 20 over the natural log of 5, which if you remember your change of base formula, this is equal to log base 5 of 20. Just barely squeeze it in there. Um, which is finally our solution to this second guy. Uh, third one. I guess I'm going to need another piece of paper, so hold on a minute. I can finish this thing up with the second page of solutions. Um, we've taken care of one and two already, so let's pick up on number three. I've got three to the 2x minus 2 minus 12 times 3 to the x minus 1 plus 27 equals 0. I'm going to give me a hint. It says use substitution. So what I was hoping you'd see there is that this is the same as 3 to the x minus 1 squared minus 12 times 3 to the x minus 1 plus 27 equals 0. So I'm taking advantage of my expo exponent rules. When you're raising an exponent to another exponent, you multiply them. And 2 times x minus 1 is 2x minus 2. And then I added these parentheses, kind of unnecessarily, but I really want you to see the 3x minus 1 in here. Because in my next step, I'm going to substitute. I'm going to let 3 to the x minus 1 equal something, whatever your favorite letter is, um, B for Brian. Sure. Um, let 3 to the x minus 1 equal B. If we do that, then what we have here is B squared minus 12B plus 27 equals 0 which is an equation we can factor. We need two numbers that multiply to positive 27, add to negative 12. I think that's b minus 9 and b minus 3. I don't know why I have the double equal signs here. Um, so that equals 0. So what that tells me is that either b equals 9 or b equals 3. But wait, we're not trying to solve for b, we're trying to solve for x b equals 3 to the x minus 1, so I have that 3 to the x minus 1 is equal to 9, or 3 to the x minus 1 is equal to 3. Um, 
So let's see, I guess I could take the log base three of both sides of the equation and get x minus one equals log base three of nine or x minus one equals log base three of three. So uh, log base three of nine is equal to two and log base three of three is equal to one. So I can solve these two equations. I get x equals three and x equals two, um, which if you want, you can plug back in the original equation to check. Uh, do I wanna do that? I don't really wanna do that. Maybe I'll just do it quick. If x is three, I get six minus two is four. Three to the fourth is 81. Um, if x is three, three squared is nine. Nine times 12 is 108. And 81 minus 108 is equal to negative 27, so plus 27 equals zero, good. Looks like that one checks. X equals two, uh, four minus, this is nine, minus 12 times three is 36, nine minus 36 is negative 27, plus 27 equals zero. Awesome, that one checks too. All right, finally the last problem. Two times the log base two of x Entire thing squared, careful. Minus log base two of x to the 17th power plus eight equals zero. Yep. Okay. Um, this one says first use log rule three, then substitution. So log rule three, be careful, that's the one with exponents. It's really tempting to try to move this exponent, but you can't because we're not taking the log base two of x squared, we're taking the log base two of x, and then we're squaring that. So this first thing you can't do anything with, you just gotta leave it as two times log base two of x squared. However, the second one, we can use our third log rule and bring this 17 down in front to get negative 17 log base two of x plus eight equals zero. Why? Why do you want to do that? Well, um, we can now substitute. Let's let log base two of x equal favorite letter. Um, let's use b again. Now that's boring. Let's use let's use b again. Log base two of x equals b. Sure. What we have is two b squared minus seventeen b plus eight equals zero. Um, and this is something we can factor. A couple different ways to factor this. One way is to find two numbers that, so let's see, let's find two numbers that add to our middle term, negative 17, and multiply to a times c, two times eight, which is 16. Those two numbers are negative 16 and negative one. And then that's not our answer, but what you do in this multiple step process is you replace your middle term, negative 17b, with negative 1b and negative 16b. And by replacing negative 17b with what we found here, this thing will factor by grouping. So you look at your first two terms and look for their greatest common factor. In this case, it's b. So you're left with 2b minus 1. And from these two terms, if you want to be left with 2b minus 1, you better factor out a negative 8. And you're left with 2b minus 1. Um, so now I have two terms, and they both have a 2b minus 1 in them. So if I pulled out that 2b minus 1, what I'd be left with is b minus 8 equals 0. So that tells me that either 2b minus 1 equals 0 or b minus 8 equals 0. So either b equals 1 half, add 1, divide by 2, or b equals 8. But you don't want to know what b equals, you want to know what x equals. So we say log base 2 of x, which is what b is equal to, equals 1 half or log base two of x is equal to eight. Maybe I can squeeze this in here. Um, first one, log base two of x 
equals one half. I guess we could, what would be the easiest way to solve this? You could do two, two both sides of the equation. Two to the log base two of x would just be equal to x. And then you get two to the one half on this side. Um, shoot, I don't. I mean, we can solve it the way we were doing it, but there's a problem here. It says that the answer should be whole numbers, and that's not true. The answer should be, the answer should be a whole numbers. Answer should be a whole number, and the square root of a whole number. Um, so now we can head back down here and finish up this problem. We had log base 2 of x equals 1 half. So if you do 2 to both sides of that equation, you get x equals 2 to the 1 half power. In other words, the square root of 2. And if we do 2 to both sides of the equation here, we'll get x equals 2 to the 8th. Um, which I think is 256. So our two answers are the square root of 2 and 256. I um, guess you could check those if you really wanted to. I'm not sure I really want to, so I think I'm just going to call that good enough. Say these are my answers. And that is finally the end of this lengthy video.